All right, welcome to Elders Rising, episode 20. It's episode way too many. <laughs> we have a guest. Do you want to introduce yourself, Ben? No names. Okay. Sorry, Mitch. <laughs> I won't say my name's Fred. My code name is... Penguin. <laughs> All right, I'm Ben. They know. <laughs> Anybody who watches this actually knows where. They know where we live. <laughs> Feds. Ben is not a fed, allegedly. We asked. Uh, friend, friends of Fred here. Just met Mitch today. Happy to, happy to join. So one of the things that um, this isn't not getting into the topic we're talking about today, but one of the things that I've been learning this week and been reading about this week is I've been reading in Deuteronomy and going through all these different laws that they set out in the Old Testament. And it was like, it was very, very set out of like, oh, if this happens, then you stone these people. If this happens, you stone these people. If this happens, you stone these people. And it's pretty, pretty brutal and pretty, uh, um, very, very set out. And it, it made me realize, like, thinking of like how when Christ came, how people, they, they everything was so, you have to have the right words, you have to have the right, you walk the right number of steps on Sunday, you have to everything was so um there, there was there was loopholes for everything and so it's like it didn't matter about how you were made sure you got the right loopholes and then you were you were good with the law and you were good with the you weren't in trouble and you were a good boy you know but that whole concept we're seeing today of like making sure that you have the the right attitude or you have the right um perspectives on social events or social matters and then it doesn't matter if you're a good person or not. It just matters that you 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 support the right causes or you do you know the and 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 again it's getting away from the whole purpose of of the gospel. Getting away from the whole purpose of of just us living and becoming more the way Christ wants us to be, of loving your fellow man and and loving God. And it's just I th I think that that that's the thing that's really uh, been interesting to me is how Christ came the people first understood the Old Testament they understood the eye for an eye they understood the you you protect your family and you protect and and they had that strong ingrained into their culture and only with that strong that 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 lower law understood can't does the higher law mean something where you no know, you turn the other cheek it's like you, you can't have one without the other in my opinion and nowadays we kind of we 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 lean into the the comfortable parts of, of the gospel. We lean into the parts that's like n nice and feels good, and um, sometimes we perhaps, in my opinion, do a disservice to the the more the harsher parts. If that makes sense. Well, people want to just want to do what's comfortable, or what makes them not look mean you want to be nice yeah they don't I don't know oh, I don't want to cause problems I don't want to this or that well okay I don't know I've had this discussion with my wife this week that people just want to be comfortable and they'll risk everything to just stay comfortable they'll I don't know. You just turn a blind eye to so many things. Because um, we were talking about, in particular, the state of the GOP in Utah. How dirty and corrupt and everything that it is. Because, you know, we should be setting an example for the rest of the for the rest of the nation. But in some of the ways, we're more corrupt than any of the other red states. Well, Romney put together that that plan for giving money to every family. Douchebag. <laughs> it's it really is just a it's socialism comes in in many different ways and it socialism has always uh, and communism has always uh, depended on the goodwill of, of some people and then enforcement to everyone else and it's like you 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 say the things that feel nice like oh we want people to be taken care of who doesn't you know. 
but I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to be taken care of, and I'd teach you how to do it yourself. Yeah. That, that's There's different than I want you to be taken care of, and I'm going to take these people's money and give it to you. That's that's the different thing, you know? It's a little bit tricky, too, Romney's plans, where he he's suggesting it'll shrink government, it'll reduce some complexity, but it'll it will increase people's dependence on the government. And the, the, down, the downstream effects of that are far worse than what's in place right now. Absolutely. And the, the cash going straight to everybody, I don't think will be utilized as well as even the, the plans and the governmental programs that exist at this point. Because it's not targeted in a way that's meant to help those who are needing it. Yeah. For example, I, you know, I have kids. But I don't need the the what is it the three thousand dollars per kid or three hundred and fifty per kid I think and then two hundred fifty is what I saw. That's per, I, per month. Per month. Yep. Oh, okay. So it's like three thousand per year yeah. almost. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I get it. Kids are expensive. You know, I I have I have them and they are involved in in sports and other extracurriculars and you know I get it, kids are expensive but I don't need them to give me money because I had kids plus didn't we run out of money like I don't know almost 30 trillion dollars ago <laughs> which brings me to another point with that um, why do we give so much money to other countries when we don't have any money we're going and into debt on on the other side of that also if you have enough money to give to other countries you're taking way too much money from your people i saw a graph of how many how much money we were giving to other countries and it um and it said per person it was broken down by the per capita givings and we're giving to israel like over a hundred thousand per person we're giving to uh, Sudan to I don't, I don't remember if Sudan was right one. You dropped the thingy. I saw that. I heard it. Okay. It's muddy. Anyways, there, there was so many. It's not mine. There, there was there, there, there was like ten different countries that it had, um, and I don't remember all of them. But there was it was like a hundred thousand. Israel was the most, and then per per capita per person. So giving that much per person, like a hundred thousand per person, giving to um, and, and it went down to like 40, 30, 20, and then like fifteen thousand. Um, there, there was like 10 different countries where we're giving over 15,000 per person to the per capita to those countries and it's just like it was I, I didn't fact check it I didn't I, I don't know it could be maybe that's that's not exactly accurate I, I would hope it's not but also I I can see it happening I can see the, the way that we we pour money into like the the I think we talked about it a few times ago but um, there, there was a high school teacher that we had and he told us that we as a country whenever we have a problem the first thing we do is we always pour money into it that can be internally or externally we just pour money into it and it's just like that's that's such a wrong and bad attitude and it's such a it's it's the wrong way to 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 go about our foreign policy money fixes everything <laughs> so let's just print more that's what you're saying Yep. That's what I heard. Let's just print more money, make it more useless. That's the thing, though. It's like money is. I mean, we've we've lived with a fiat currency, which if you don't know what that is, it's. Um, it's a car. No. 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 The. It is. Basic. Chrysler owns it. Yeah. It's a little. And it's kind of gay. <laughs> Do you drive a fiat? Did I just make fun of you? No. <laughs> it's way worse than that. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I have to know now. <laughs> little Ford Focus. It's real cute. Hell yeah. I had a little red Ford Focus in high school. It was adorable. Yep. I hated that car. <laughs> my parents made me buy it so my brother could buy my other brother's truck so he could go on his mission. And I had wrecked my car, and they're like, well, you have to buy this. I'm like, I don't want to buy that. It's my money. Well, good luck with the cosigner. Bullshit. 
Anyway, I bitched about it so much that finally let me sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Hated that car. It was kind of a piece of shit. At least mine's a stick shit, so it's kind of theft proof. <laughs> <laughs> My Jeep's a manual. <laughs> nice. But it's kind of gutless. It is not a speed demon. It is all but fast. <laughs> But it's fun, so that's cool. Anyway, fiat currency? I don't know, do you want me to go into that? Yep. Basically, sure. so when when you go, uh, a fiat currency is a currency that is valuable because everybody agrees that it's valuable. It doesn't have anything specific that gives the currency itself value other than people agreeing that it's valuable. Cryptocurrency is another form of fiat currency. It's valuable because people want it, but it doesn't have it in itself a value. Um, originally, the dollar was was backed by um, gold. Gold. That was a gold standard. So every dollar had a, a, a representation of, like it represented a certain portion of gold that was that was protected in Fort Knox or whatever, you know. But but um, when was it that we went off the gold standard? I want to say that was like the seventies. Was it the seventies? I think it was Nixon, maybe. I thought I was thinking it was earlier than that, but I don't know. I can't remember. Well, at some point we went off the gold standard. Well, in the twenties, Roosevelt confiscated everybody's gold and silver. Yeah, it was illegal to have gold in the twenties. True. Douchebag. <laughs> so, I mean, they confiscated everybody's gold, so that put more gold back into Fort Knox or the reserve or wherever the hell they put it. But then, I mean, they've just kept growing and growing and spending and spending, so that's all gone. Probably got rid of the last of our gold in the 70s. It was interesting. There was a... a but it, I guess they... So they took the dollar off the gold standard, so that now there's no longer a dollar... Uh, a fixed gold amount for every dollar. Um, but it's the dollar still has value because everybody values it. And so that's what means... That's what it means to be a fiat currency is that its value is in the fact that everybody wants it not necessarily in the fact that it is a valuable itself um, before before paper currency they used um, coins obviously and one of the things about coins and one of the reasons why coins were so interesting is because metal um, some of the properties of metal are to where you can reuse it for other things you can always you can all there's always value in like precious metals um, and for instance i think silver is the most conductive metal and like it's used in like your your. It's also the most pure. It's what? The most pure. It is. They gold used to doesn't take tarnish. Silver. They used to take silver back when they were taking the big old tall ships across the ocean. They put their they put silver in their drinking water to keep it from going bad. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. And I so, was a pirate once. <laughs> so so the with coins like when you look at like the Roman Empire. There, there was the Roman, uh, din is it dinars? I forget. I don't remember the names of the coins, but basically what their, what their, what um, Rome did to their citizens is they, they have their, their basic unit of, of coin that they used, and then over time they modified it to where they diluted the. It was, I think it was copper, but they diluted it to where it only had a portion of copper in it, and, it, and they kept, they kept cutting out the amount of copper that was in it, and it was just filled with, with filler metals like pewter and stuff like that, I guess. But um, the, the they over time they 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 made it so that there was more money by diluting the value of each each coin, and that's that's basically what's happening. That's happened with the dollar for the last hundred years. I don't know. A long time. Yeah, it's been happening to the dollar for a long time. And when when you first off when you take it off the gold standard, there there's nothing to hard stop that. But then when you have things like quantitative easing, it started, what did we, what was it, 2012 when they first did quantitative easing? And um, basically what that is, is that's printing money. And and it's not even printing money. It's, it's basically telling the banks um, that they can lend out more money. But yet they don't have to have, there's no, there, there doesn't need to be that actual money in existence. It's just on in, in a books in a ledger somewhere where it's like, okay, there's this much money that you have that you can lend out, but it's, there's, there's no actual, f even physical paper to, to back it. Because our, our wealth and our, um, our currency is digital now. Like, 
with me, we don't have an, even have the option to get paper checks. They're just direct deposited into our accounts. And I mean, unless I pull physical cash out of the bank, I don't have cash. All my money's digital. That's one of it's the really not real. Yeah, one of the interesting things about um, about my father-in-law, because my parents, uh, my my wife's parents, they. Um, went through communism in Romania, but he, my my father-in-law, he always prefers to have physical money instead of digital, um, it's, and, and it's because there's 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 always that value there because it's mm -hmm. like when with with digital if you get cut off if you're no longer acceptable to use your cards, <laughs> which there have been um, people who have been who like have been told they, they, they can't do business with banks and stuff like that because of their political views or because of their um, whether they're radicals and stuff like that there, there's there's been ways that people have been cut off from the system and, and if you don't have something physical that's just one more way that you can be controlled it's a potential well and cash always speaks louder than anything else too for example if you go to buy something private party a car or gun whatever um, somebody can have it listed for, you know, say, they want to sell a car for ten grand. And you say you show them eight, nine thousand dollars. Say, I, you know, this is what I've got. Will you take it? People will usually take, you know, cash in hand. <laughs> Unless they're stingy. It's money talks, but it's uh, don't sing and dance, and it don't walk. Where are you singing? Don't do that. Who is it that sings that song? Don't know. I've never heard it. I want to say Billy Joel or something like that. John Denver. John <laughs> Ford. <laughs> no. John Denver sings Enter Sandman. Don't know what that is. Oh, Judas Priest, Fred. <laughs> Now you got to sing, Mitch. <laughs> <coughs> you talking to Metallica? Oh, yeah. Fred's mom got so mad at me for saying something about Metallica one time. She <laughs> says, it's hard rock. It's bad music. I was like, what? <laughs> you ever listen? So, well, don't listen to it. <laughs> Friend's dad used to say Third Eye Blind was the devil's music. Oh, <laughs> my God. Third Eye Blind. <laughs> Satan getting in you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I like rock. I like metal. I also like old country, like Marty Robbins, Jim Reeves, Johnny, Johnny Horton. Cash. Yep. <laughs> I don't know anybody else the old country other than Johnny Cash. Do you even music, Fred? I like Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel are pretty cool. But when Disturbed redid the Sound of Silence oh, a few that was years such ago, a good, you know, that was amazing. I was like, yeah, it's good, but Simon and Garfunkel did it better. And people were like, who's Simon and Garfunkel? What are you talking about? And then other people were like, no, they didn't. I'm like, yeah, they did. Disturbed's version, and I mean, it's different. It's kind of cool, but I mean, it's at best okay. I'm a big fan of Simon and Garfunkel, and I'm not a big fan of Disturbed, but that that version of Disturbed I absolutely loved. Dis the the, the uh, sound of silence I loved. Disturbed is like Five Finger Death Punch, and I mean they're not bad bands, but they're very overrated. Yeah. Very overrated. If anybody says that Metallica is overrated, I'm gonna slap them. I don't even <laughs> like Metallica. That's because you're a faggot. I put on Metallica in the in my truck with the kids, and I uh -huh. pumped, I kicked up the, the sound really loud. And my wife was like, "Both me and my wife like Metallica, obviously." But my kid, I didn't know that you like, liked Metallica. Yeah, of course I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> your mom told you not to. I don't even remember my mom saying that. Like, <laughs> we were all at your house when you guys went to Bothwell. I don't doubt one bit that she said it. I just don't remember. It's like, nah. My mom says a lot of things. <laughs> I love her, but I love your mom too. <laughs> Metallica's skill level is very 
very impressive. We when I that's was what playing, I like about metal and rock um, is they still they still have skill, they still have talent, and they use it. Oh, it's and amazing. They write their own songs. They, they, they play. The, they make the music. A machine's not making it. Yeah. And they're not just saying she's a hoe over and over and over again and take, talking about horrible things. But some somehow that's bad music, as opposed <laughs> to all the pop and hip hop and crap that people listen to. It's like are you even listening to what they're saying. Cause it's like way worse than what I'm listening to. <laughs> Either meaningless or or terrible. Yeah. I'm, I'm into folk and, and country music lately. Uh, Jethro Tull? No. Marty Robbins? No. Johnny Horton? I like Josh Ritter. Who the hell is that? Ah. <laughs> he's my favorite guy right now. He, he's from Idaho. Uh, Ew. I would actually like to move to Idaho. I actually think he's a fantastic storyteller. To be able to tell a whole story in a song. Oh, so he does ballads. I would probably yeah. like him then. Yeah. That's awesome. Who is it? Josh Ritter. Josh Ritter. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Anyway, we're a music review channel now. <laughs> I know the notes. <laughs> I don't know the notes. So I was listening to a guy that was going over um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the, the music in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I didn't know this, but I guess one of the, guy, the guys that wrote... Mr. Rogers himself was a really good musician, but um, one his, his, the guy, his main writer, was a um, like this jazz, really really good jazz guy. And like you listen to the intro, it always sounds similar, but it's like it's different like every time, because it's he's he's riffing every time, and it's just like uh, uh, there was this jazz guy that was was going over it, and he was like, this is why this is so good. Jimi Hendrix. I had, no. I don't think it's Jimmy. Is Jimmy Hendrix even jazz? Like, no. I was going to say. Like, he's, he's harder metals. He's, I just know he's good at guitar. That's all I know about Iron him. Maiden. Is that Iron Maiden? Jimmy Hendrix and Iron Maiden? No, Fred. I don't know these things. Names, names are you... wasted on me. Do you know who ACDC is? Yeah, the current. Yep. That's electric. No, 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 no. It's electric. That's ACDC, right? Sure. Yep, sure is. Oh, how do we get, how did we go to come to this point? Let's go back to the Constitution. No, you were talking about listening to Metallica with your kids. Oh, it was amazing. My kids, so my 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 daughters, they play the um, one plays the cello and one plays the viola, and they were some of the music in Metallica. They were like they got excited about. And I was really I was excited <laughs> about that. I was listening on YouTube last night. Yeah, um, I found a couple of videos that just do. Um, the riffs and stuff from a bunch of different songs and all it is is the guitars and I'm like this is awesome mm -hmm. I love guitars I think they're awesome do you remember when you said we should start a band yeah it's a good thing we didn't yeah that would have been terrible because it would have been worse than what we're doing now <laughs> that's <was> pretty bad <laughs> I always wanted to learn to play the guitar that's what I always wanted to do I always wanted to learn how to play it but I never had the opportunity. And now my fingers don't work good enough and I don't have enough feeling in them to do it, so. Those sound like excuses, Mitch. That's what I got. <laughs> That's what I got. You got my daughter a guitar, though. I need to find somebody that can teach her how to play it. That's awesome. Because it's not going to be me. Anyway, the Constitution. We finished the Constitution. I know we were gonna. We were talking about the. Some of the amendments. We're talking about the Bill of Rights. In convention. Well, hello. I couldn't find my Constitution last week. I'm like, where the hell? I found it in the pocket of my coat that I wore the week before. Roxy, go away, Doc. Amendments to the Constitution. Page 50. Yep. Did you want to... There was two pages in there that one was in, in convention from Monday, September 17th, 1787. And um, Congress of the United States. Do you want to read those? In convention? 
Hey, you've got it too. It's here. Hey, cool. Um, I want. Let's skip it. We can read it if you want. I just don't know what it is. I, and I was excited to get into our first and first and second amendments. Okay. So what is the Bill of Rights, and how did the Bill of Rights come to be? The Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments that we have to our Constitution. But how did it come to be? Do you know how it came to be? Um, it wasn't it like... I don't, I don't know the full story. I, I, well, I'm sure I've heard it, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. I will do a terrible retelling. So, that was part of Virginia's contribution to the convention was they said, you know, this constitution's all well and good, but we have to have a bill of rights. Because, you know, man's corrupt and perverted and whatnot. So, Virginia, and I, th I think there was one or two other states that were insistent on a bill of rights. Did, so, did they do this at the same time that they ratified the... Uh, they, was it, is the right term ratified ratified the Constitution? I don't think they so. They did not do it at the same time. I thought it was like 10 years after or something like that. Or a few years Except after. The, um, um, Bill of Rights was ratified in 1791. I remember there were a number of representatives that were very hesitant about the government being able to overstep uh, the, the rights of the people, uh, which rights come from God. They wanted to include those in the Constitution rather than going through the time and process to debate those at the time. Yeah. There were kind of assurances made that as soon as Congress was formed and the, the country was established that, that those would be the first order of business by the, by the Congress. I'm not sure if it was the first, first order of business, but they, they did get it done. Well, what are the things that they all, pretty much the only thing that they could agree on was that Governments always tend to grow themselves and become tyrannical and oppressive. And so that's what we're seeing today. That, that, yeah. Well, that's what we've been seeing for over a hundred years. Yeah. That's before that. Supercharged for the last hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> we have USA supercharged. <laughs> How do you? What is it? Supercharged TM? So <laughs> badass. <laughs> How do we make this sound like way cooler than what it actually is? We have super charged in front of it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> give me my money. Give me. Take my money. <laughs> Speaking of supercharged, so I've always been pretty anti minivan. Mm -hmm. I don't like minivans. They're amazing. I make, I make fun of you for minivan. I'm like, if I'm going to get a minivan, I'm just going to get an SUV so that I can still, like, tow with it and basically have a truck because I'm not driving a minivan Dodge put their Hellcat motor in a minivan and I told Katie I said I want a minivan <laughs> she says what I said I want a freaking minivan I want this minivan <laughs> she's like why I said because it's got a Hellcat in she says what's a Hellcat I said it's a really cool motor and she told me no she said, you have a truck and you have a Jeep. So, I want this super badass minivan. <laughs> got like 400 and some odd horsepower. <laughs> That's great. It's really cool. Now we're a car channel too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to read number one? Sure. You talking to me or yeah. to Ben? Do you want to read number one? I can. Go ahead, Ben. Love to. Do it. We don't want to listen to Fred. Amendment one. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Wow. So where does... Um, Congress shall make no law, no law respecting an establishment of religion come from. Isn't that from, because because the England was a monarch, I mean the Church of England. I'm guessing it has to do with that. But yeah. I, over a no. hundred years before 
um, all this. Uh huh. Um, when people were really starting to come to the United States, that was a big part of it. Was you didn't have a say in what, you know, what religion you were going to practice and everything like that. And so, you know, that was a big part of people starting to come here, so that they could worship and whatnot as as they as they wanted and so would so choose. Philosophically consistent with the right of the people and not the right of the government. Right? Yeah. So it's good work there. Yeah. And the thing that came to my mind though is like how to me it, it seems like we're the, culturally right now there's a there's a big push for secularism. There's a big push for like science being the the have all be all. Yeah. And and science has become a religion in everything but name in a lot of ways and science there's 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 amazing things about science but people um when people take uh studies or whatever and they 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 make their lives around these studies or these these ideas or concepts without actually understanding what was being studied or how it was studied or understanding the the evidences that have been created it you, you get a lot of uh the way i think of it is like your um your headline culture where it's like you make decisions based off of headlines and you get headlines from something sensational in studies and you also have like uh it 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 it, it, it it's turned it's it's kind of turned the secularism into a a religion of the state in some ways and i think that that would be against what this the the first amendment is also teaching well that's why um like you look at the at the left right now and they say you know it's all about the science regarding covid or this that and the other thing and they're all about the science unless it comes to like gender and chromosomes and shit and then we don't listen to the science but it's, it's i don't i don't remember where i was going with this so never mind well there was a i mean there was a there were in um i think it was san francisco there was a the school board one of the ladies that she she was pushing for them to get rid of using tests to so one of the best schools they have in the state uh the, it's it's uh, one of the prestigious schools she's saying that it's racist because it uses uh the, people have to test into it and it's a high school and they're like oh that's racist and stuff like that and I, I don't know if it's a public or a private school i don't know any details on it so there there might be valid reasons for her argument but i thought it was interesting that the 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 article that I read was about how using standardized tests to to um, vet or filter or uh, as a pre qualifier was was being fought against, and, and it is just it's just it, you, science is always useful when it's when it's what you want it to tell you, but it's not it's it's inconvenient it's uncomfortable and inconvenient when it doesn't tell you the things that you want to hear, and so it's just like like well, you said. Racism, always crying racism is like their go-to thing when they don't have any like factual or really any any kind of argument to actually stand on. They just say, that's racist. What does it have to do with skin color? Skin color is the most arbitrary thing about any of us. It doesn't have, my skin color doesn't have anything to do with who I am as a person, just like Nobody else's skin color has to do with who they are as a person. It all has to do with the choices that you make. So, I hear the racism argument. I'm like, are we really talking about this now, again? It, it's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. Your skin color doesn't say what kind of a person you are. Anyway, sorry. No, Soapbox, I... tangent. I just get so mad hearing that. And then I love when people say, well, you don't know what it's like for your people to be oppressed. Really? My people got chased clear across the country. and had to start a new life in the middle of the desert for their beliefs. So, and the other, my other part of my heritage has been spit on and called baby killers and, you know, are treated like we're crazy or have to be treated with kids' love. So, you know, don't come at me with that bullshit. So the racism narrative is just one tool 
that I think is being used in a toolkit to control people, right? I think going back to science, I'm a scientist of sorts and science reporting generally is very poor. And oftentimes the conclusions or headlines of these stories le propose a conclusion of the study that, that isn't, you're, you aren't able to legitimately state. And so, first it's sensational just to sell the story, sell the newspaper. But since, I think, in the last, it's, I can't put a time period on it, but I think as, as people with an agenda have continued to enter in institutions like the media, uh, they they viewed it more as an ability to to sway people's opinions, change change culture, change thought, um, and so science reporting is another one of those items in the toolkit. We'll state what we want you to think it says. We'll we'll overstate the conclusions. <laughs> we'll we'll go beyond what the science can really say because you don't understand how science works. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the scientific method, driving hypotheses, testing those hypotheses, and what, what the conclusion of the study means. Well, well I, I think another thing that people don't, don't realize is it's just as easy to buy a scientist as it is to buy a politician or anybody else. So, and I used to do um, a lot of lab work, and... So I, I know how easy it can be to manipulate your data because you can take your, um, your sample size and you can take it during certain times of the days, weeks, whatever, and that will affect and give you what kind of result you personally want if you so, if you so choose. So, but a lot of people don't realize that and they don't accept that. And, I'm not smart enough to know what I'm talking about, apparently. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of beside the point on this one. <laughs> but I was talking about this with my wife just this week as well, because she's she's doing um, child development at, in college, and there was uh, she was reading. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name. He was a guy that was actually he studied with Marx, and she was she she was reading about him. She's like, why are we learning about this guy? But basically, he he was. The study that he did was on language, and he went out to the countryside, and he would he would um, interview people that had been. They would offer free classes, and then he would interview people that were going to these classes um, versus people that weren't going to the classes. And he would. This is the question he would ask. He would say, "There, in the north, there are polar. There are bears that are, are white skinned." And then he'd say, "This city," and he gave some city, "is in the north." And then he'd say, "What color are the bears there?" And the people in the countryside, the people that didn't go to those classes, they were like, I don't know, I've never been. And the people who would go to those classes, a lot of times they would have the rhetorical, they would understand how to, oh, well, if in the north this, then this, then okay, the, the, the bears are white there. And so he used it as an evidence to show that, okay, look at how good this, our schooling is doing, but there, there's so much arrogance in that because the, the, the common folk, the peasants, he called, that was, that's his term, the peasants, <laughs> They, um, they were too stupid, in his, in his opinion, if they weren't educated, but they were also honest. They were just honest people, like, I haven't been there. You, and they're like, no, you, you, he would even press them, like, based off of what I say. I'm like, well, I haven't been there. Well, I can't say that based off of what you say because I, I haven't been there. I don't even know you. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like, I don't know. Why would I? Like, that, there's, there's a fundamental. And then, and then to take that study and to use it to, to say, oh, look, this is what we're. Put your hand out. Ah, no. This to, to to make evidence no. of uh, use this as one of your evidence to for your arguments is like oh look at how good we're we're doing it's just like it's so interesting to me that you can take you can take um a, you can take a study and make evidence f mean what you want and one of the things that's always fascinated me and this has to do with paradigm is when you can take this one evidence and show it to two different people and they can draw different conclusions and both conclusions are legitimate like well-founded ideas of why their conclusions come but they they both draw from the same evidence and it's like that's the thing that we we need to realize especially in like a in a scientific realm evidence is is one thing but conclusion is something completely different. Like you said, it's people that don't understand that, that process, that, that method of science. 
and it's just like okay these are the evidence we have and it's like making conclusions from those evidences is 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 where you you get into very dicey territory you do there's a there's a vast difference between truth and science right? the eternal like truths that. that we know and there is there are eternal truths in in every realm but science is based is an ability for us to gain understanding to hopefully approach truths to find things that we can say are consistent and look like truths but it's different than truth well science is all about finding the, the whole purpose of science is to be able to predict what's going to happen under a certain circumstance it's the ability to predict what's going to happen if you call that truth that's like there's there, there that's where it's like interesting but in, in the scientific, uh, according to, uh, there was one class that I took in, in college that where we talked about the, um, it was the philosophy of science. And every scientific uh, exploration, it, you have you have the things that you're, you're, you're known variables, but you always have unknown variables. There's always something that you don't know. And you can't, you, they, 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 they give an, in, the, in the equations that we were given, you give an E to it, and there's an E value, but I don't, you, you, there's no, you have no way of telling how significant that value is because you don't know what you don't know. And you can never know the things that you don't know because it's, that's the nature of not knowing. It. And so it's like, you can make, you can prepare these, these experiments and you can make them work correct under these circum circumstances and you can make a, a conclusion, but you, the, the point of actually knowing that your, your assumption is correct is always suspect because of that E value. You don't know what, what accounted for, what part that had in the accounting for the prediction. And it's just like, it, it, it's really interesting to, to realize that, okay. And, and this is one of the things that like Karl Popper, he gets into and he's, he, he always asserted that science was the, the search of truth. And, um, so several of his, several of his students were like, no, it's the search of, uh, uh, be, the ability to predict what's going to happen. And, and I actually like that. And I agree with that, that assessment of science much more. Science. There was a there was a um, a group of people that they were they were from what I understand it, it, there was like four people but they they were left leaning but they were just honest people and they they came up with um, I think they they did five or ten different studies and they wanted to see which ones were published and peer reviewed and of the of the number that they did it might have been ten um, I want to say it was ten of the number that they did though four of them were peer reviewed and accepted at and published in in magazines and stuff like that and one of them was Playboy? like what Nothing. one of them was like about um animals and some <laughs> some sexual thing with animals or something like that it was playboy <laughs> no <laughs> i didn't hear what you had said no but but that's why i snickered to myself oh gotcha i was so proud of me <laughs> <laughs> i could make a dirty joke <laughs> <laughs> but um, Gosh, but that's, that's the thing. It's like they came out afterwards and they said these these studies were completely made up. And it's like, how did they get through a, a peer review process? How did they, you know? And it was it was because they they aligned with what the popular desire of the of of, of science to be, you know. And it was just it was really interesting. I'll, I'll have to find it if you're interested and send it to you. But there there's there's interesting stuff. They call I, I've heard it called the um, falsification crisis that science is going through yeah um what else do you want to talk about in amendment one um why is it important for free for free speech this is something that i've heard and i don't know i was wondering if you guys had any uh, any other insider if you'd heard this before but one of the things that i heard that it, there was um so you, you still have there's there's laws that are like um that are blasphemy laws and stuff like that that are on books and one of the things that people would that one of the, the things that I'd heard and I have not heard this from many people and I don't know how valid it is but it seems like it makes sense that there the the idea of free speech is obviously it's it's super important for our country to be able to speak against the government that's I mean one of the biggest things and that's I think one of the reasons why free speech is so is even outlined in the in the Constitution along with that free free to peaceably assemble, the right to free to to peaceably assemble and to petition the government. Why are we, 
But why petition the government? For redress and gr or of grievances. Is what it is. Is what it says. But because it's you weren't allowed to question the crown, you just did what you were told. And the feeling was, they're two thousand miles away. Why should they have any say in how or what we do? They don't really have anything to offer us. They didn't treat a. They didn't treat them like uh, you know, actual citizens. And so you know, they were just misrepresented and underrepresented. And they didn't have any say. And I mean, it just it ties all back into what was going on at the time and very clearly states why these things are important and it gives us insight to what the founders were thinking so when people s misinterpret or say we don't well we don't know what their meaning was it's just lazy and irresponsible arguments That makes sense. The thing that I was going to talk about, uh, the the idea that I'd heard is like how the freedom of speech, it was it was understood that that's something that should be handled more on, on a localized level. It's something that should be handled more as far as like because you you look at let, let's take this this concept of freedom of speech. Do you, at what point like? So is all what what speech is free? You know, is everything free to say? Free from what? That's that, that's a loaded question. It's a huge. It's, it really <laughs> is. It's like if someone's if someone's encouraging others to hurt your family, is that free to say? No. Why? Because that infringes on my rights. How? They're not doing anything to you. Not yet, but it will lead to it. That's but but you see what I'm saying? That 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 that. That concept of like what leads to what, what causes what, that that gets really messy really fast. Yeah, it can. And and so the the the, the point that I'm pointing out, I guess, the thing that I'm thinking is, from from what I understand, the idea that like you would let the the local uh, your local governments handle what your what is acceptable speech within your area, but the federal government had no right over it. Well, the, the federal government wasn't supposed to really do anything other than oversee interstate commerce and provide national defense treaties and that was like pretty that. much the only purpose for the federal government right it was our was yeah it was really limited it wasn't supposed to be centralized it wasn't supposed to be all powerful like it is now the states were to make up you know their own laws and their own rules and that was up for the people in those states to decide well nowadays the, the whole concept of freedom of speech, and here's the thing that I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I'm wanting to get your guys' I, I'm, I'm wanting to ask about is like, now you have people, you have um, trans hours at public libraries where there, you have dra drag queens reading stories to um, Don't you start kids. interfering on my Saturdays. <laughs> so is that, is that covered under the, like, should that be protected, you know? And it's like... You have just think of like the ba the baking the cakes, that that couple that wanted to have a they wanted to force a Christian couple the Christian bakery to bake a um, their their gay wedding cake, you know? Yeah. Is that here's like, here's my opinion? Are you ready for it? That's it. If they want to do trans hours at the public library, cool, whatever. Make sure that it's stated and posted. So if you don't have a problem with it, and you're okay with it, cool, whatever. But. I don't want to, you know, drop my kid off for something and have it be something completely different because they did not communicate or explain properly what it was about. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the other part? I forgot already. The Well, you have, like, the baking the cake. Oh, you can't compel or make somebody do something that they disagree with. But they did. You're right, they did, and it was unconstitutional. It was a gross violation of those people's rights. See, you can't force somebody to do something in this country. And here's here's my opinion, is like, the the people should be the ones that are, the, the power should drive from the people. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to like speech and stuff like that, the federal government has no um, has no place to be 
um, just stating what's what speech is free, what is mm-hmm. what is good or bad speech or hate speech or you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. The, the federal government has no place like that. So, However, local governments I do think should represent the people. If the people don't want to be listening to, um, if they don't want to have people that are doing that kind of thing, then at a local level they can make that kind of decision. But that shouldn't be a decision that's binding either positive or negative mm-hmm. for for people here versus like people in california or in new york or you know that let the people decide what they want what is acceptable to that to their location yeah and that's that's my opinion yeah but i mean it goes back to like with the with the bakers mm-hmm. you want them to make a gay cake and they say no i'm not making a gay cake at what point do you just say oh okay well i'll go somewhere else well i'm gay and i'm really angry about it because i'm gay so you have to you know do this for me i don't have to do shit for you buddy it like i said people want to be gay and do things i really don't care what they do be respectful like you know most normal people just be respectful but i mean shit you can't force somebody to cave on their beliefs because of your beliefs out of you know your freaking angry douchebag makes me mad and that and that goes on on all sides regardless of what your opinion is Mm -hmm. because that's that's a part of of having a free society is letting people be themselves as long as like you had said you Mm -hmm. alluded to originally is like as long as they don't infringe on your rights as long as they don't yeah you know and that's 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 a hard that's a hard thing for people to realize because it's like it, but you have to look at things in the proper context yeah that's the whole thing because you'll have people argue um i'm going to skip ahead to the second amendment real quick mm-hmm. but you'll have people argue you know well the second amendment people being able to own guns infringes on my rights what right to be my right to life and safety and blah 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 i'm like that's why you have the second amendment you have every right that i have and going and getting a gun, learning how to use it, and, you know, being proactive with your own safety. So that you can take those steps to not become a victim of somebody else. It's pretty simple. That's why I carry a gun. I've carry. I've had my concealed permit for, what, 15 years-ish? So almost half my life. I've been, you know... I have my concealed carry permit and I carry it whenever I'm whenever I go anywhere so somebody else can't force their will upon me I'm sure you you may have seen that starting in May in Utah here there's no permit required for concealed carry anymore yeah. no, it just, should be that way in all 50 states I agree <laughs> I just signed that into law but it's it's one of those it's an overdue thing why it's a right that's guaranteed to me by the creator. I don't. I shouldn't have to ask government's permission to carry a gun to protect myself and my family from somebody else imposing their will on me. That's so the principle underlying that is personal security, right? It's mm-hmm. not really about the weapon. It's about security. Yeah. And your right to protect yourself in, in any way that you choose. It's been established that we have... You know the right to be secure in our possessions mm-hmm. it's well established <laughs> so I mean but it's just it's a double standard so back to the the the, the bakers um, they can say no to baking a gay cake and then the gays can turn around and sue them for some reason I'm still not real clear on why but on the other hand, I could go into a baker and say, hey, I want a, you know, I want a cake made in the shape of an AR-15. And they could say, no. Do you think I have any chance of suing them for not baking an AR-15 cake? No. There's there's so many double standards and everything, and, and they've done this out of, well, these people have been mistreated and picked on for so long, so we have to make it right. I didn't mistreat anybody. So it's all in the name of fairness. They've turned 
equal rights into equal things. And <laughs> that's, that's not how it works. There's a little bit of difference that I see in the two examples. Uh, the, the baking of the cake as, as a, an expression of free, free speech, or perhaps compelled speech if they were forced to, to do that. Uh, verse, and, and that's a, a free economic interaction between two individuals, right? Uh, there's no government really involved other than government licenses companies. Nor should what, there for be. For whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but the library, on the other hand, that's a local government issue, right? The librarian may, may be the one authorizing library programming decisions, if you, if you use that, that phrase, but the, the librarian isn't directly elected, so how do we, on a local level, make our voice known or make a change uh, come about if we were unhappy with with what was being offered and allowed at the library versus not allowed at the library. Mm -hmm. um, is it, can anyone come in and do any activity? Uh, <laughs> the LDS can have their activity at the library, the transgender people can have their activity, the Satanists can have their activity. Is it is it open like that or, or how do we, it, how is there If you make an example for one, or an exception for one, you should make an exception for all. Okay. Right? That's what it should be. You either make an exception for everybody or you don't make any exceptions for anybody. So the way that you should be able to address that, where the library is usually a city thing, you know, you should be able to go and talk to the city council and be like, you know, this, 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 and this is wrong and this is why I think that. And, you know, the majority... Of people think that's wrong blah 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 and that's how you should be able to address it but at the same time in a republic majority doesn't really matter so it comes down to the elected official yeah in a way but it comes down to is it really a right to do this like I don't feel that the library is a right libraries are privileges well do you that comes down to the fact of like the, the is, is it the government's business to have public services like that like libraries parks that kind of stuff it's like that's that's again that's that's uh, well where if they can run it a private industry could run it better <laughs> <laughs> but is there any is there any money to be made in owning a private library it's a service that they offer and cool, whatever, but I don't know that it's really in their purview. That's one of those things that doesn't really matter. Well, I guess the thing that I was getting at is it, it, it should be a local thing. Like mm -hmm. if, if, the, if, a, if a community wants to have a library, they should be able to do that as a community. But again, it's not like having... Uh, a, the federal government come down and say, "Oh, you have to have this, or you have to do that." You have to have trans hour. You have to have trans hour. Yeah, that's that's like that's not. But yeah, that's. The, 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 I guess the the, the yeah. thing I was articulating is, it, to me, it feels like a lot of times the idea of free speech is argued for the purpose of creating, uh, of allowing and enabling degeneracy. I love degeneracy. And I mean, in 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 a way that is. Um, a way that that harms the that that breaks down the nuclear family that breaks down the things that make our society important like you know that breaks down the the, the morality of the people well like we said earlier the federal government's not supposed to really have any real power or authority mm -hmm. they make laws all the time at the federal level which as we've discussed and um, talked about through the whole reading of the Constitution, how much they do that is unconstitutional, yet we still allow it. Like our entire tax code, the IRS, all of that, it's unconstitutional. The Federal in, Reserve. The, <laughs> the Federal Reserve. Um, the impeachment that they just had. Um, everybody's saying that 
you know, we, we can do this. Well, no, Article 1, Section 3 pretty clearly stated that the impeachment is for somebody who is in office. I think they just have confirmed that Donald Trump is still in office. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, I mean, that's... Have you seen, have you seen the videos of, like, um, what's the, the, the barricades and stuff that are going around in Washington? We've been doing that since, like, early last month i know since but it's the, still nuts to me since since the the insurrection <laughs> it, is it really an insurrection if nobody gets hung <laughs> i mean i was really disappointed <laughs> i was really disappointed <laughs> but i watched the video and they're like <laughs> it showed how close mitt romney came to running into that mob face to face and i said son of a bitch <laughs> 15 more seconds it's only 15 Roxy, Roxy. more seconds Go ahead. and with the problem would be over. But, I mean, if you were doing what you were supposed to be doing and you were being honest and you were doing right, you wouldn't have to put up barricades. You, barricades. you wouldn't have to bring 25,000 National Guard troops to D.C. to protect you from the people that you've pissed off. Yes. Do the right thing. There's a reason why they say honesty is the best policy. So, I mean... That's my theory. I'm not going to, you know, pack up all my stuff and go to go. D.C. Roxy, get. Come here, Doug. Get. Okay. Yeah, I say get. Get on out here. <laughs> what are you doing over there, Fred? I'm giving my dog some cheese. Cheese? Is cheese bad for dogs? Find out. Yeah, it's really bad for dogs. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't, do I look like a veterinarian? Do I look like I know really anything of value? Sure. Uh, uh, nope. <laughs> I'm stretching here. <laughs> I guess that's that's the point that I wanted to point out, though. It's like how. The, 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 the federal government shouldn't be involved in, yeah. you know, 99% of things. One of the things that um, I think that everybody should realize is that the smaller the federal government is, the less ability it has to mess up your life. And so everybody, regardless of your political affiliation, regardless of whether you what you think should happen or shouldn't happen, the smaller the federal government is, the less likely it is to bother you. And so you should be wanting and supporting and, and voting for a smaller federal government. You look at your tax, your pay, your pay stub. How much of your taxes goes to your state versus how much goes to your the, the, your, the federal government? And I actually that, paid more in state taxes this year than federal. You did? Oh. Yep. Because the state of Utah is corrupt and dirty and they're a bunch of dickheads. Yeah. Just saying. We have surpluses, Mitch. You don't have a surplus, you over-collected. <laughs> Plus, you can't say that you have a surplus when every year you're raising taxes. <laughs> you don't have a surplus, you over-collected. <laughs> then you created all these all these stupid pet projects, and then you're like, holy shit, we don't have money for it, let's raise taxes. And then you tell people how good you are because of all these people that you've helped. Look at all this extra money we have! Yeah. The thing is, the sad thing is, there's a lot of people who are not smart enough to see what they're doing. Oh, cool, our state has a surplus. Dude, you don't realize how much money you're giving the state all the time? <laughs> They're going to raise the gas tax up 1% again. Really? Yeah. They're doing all sorts of stupid shit, and they're like, look how conservative we are. What are those ABCD items that we vote on on our, you know, every couple of years? <laughs> I, sw I think recently that's where they've been pushing tax increases through because well they purposely put the catchy headline of how great it'll be what what they can do and then and the back end is raise your taxes yeah well they like the amendments that you vote on and stuff they word them very tricky yes so you have to sit there and you read it okay what how is this gonna come back to bite me now let me read this again. What? They, and they word it like that for a reason. So you're like, oh, don't, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Right. It's like that amendment that they had this 
last elections, like to to change the word from slavery in something that had to do with the criminal code. It's like, mm-hmm. right. And so, I mean, all it had to do was with something in our constitution saying something about slavery for people who are imprisoned because they committed a crime. Well, yeah, you're paying for your crime. Slavery or not, I mean, it's it's. They're changing it to be politically correct. It's like, why are you wasting money on this? This is stupid. Nobody cares that it says slavery. And if they do, they're stupid. <laughs> Roxy, you're a beggar. Sorry. Go away. Okay, I'll keep it here. Anyway, moving on. Amendment number two? Yeah. I'll read it. A well regu- Amendment number two. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I love the way that they said that because it's very clear. No, it's not. When you say it shall not be infringed, that doesn't mean people have the right to do it. It means the government doesn't have the right to stop it. Yeah. That's that's that there that's very clear in the sense of like You don't have a say in the matter. Yeah. That's what that's what it's saying. You don't have a right to rule on what you know, make a ruling on what people can and can't own. People on battleships. When that was in yeah. 1791 when the Bill of Rights was ratified. By that theory, I should be able to buy a battleship or an aircraft carrier. Anything that the government has, it was intended for the people to have as well as a check against the government. And the thing that's so interesting about that is you look at it and it's like, what's the purpose of that? It's like, if the purpose is you don't want the government to have a monopoly on safety. You Defense. Don't want the, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they should be able to help protect the country, but they shouldn't be the only ones that can have a monopoly on safety. The, the people that, the, the, the people, as a, as a people, have every bit as much right to, to their own protection. Well, there's, there's You several... dropped your thing again. Yeah, I don't care. It's yours. <laughs> Not going to be able to hear you, Mitchell. Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different aspects to this, right? Um, obviously, the intent to it was to be a check on the government, right? The people are... As well armed as the government, it's going to be a lot harder for the government to get out of control and inter- interfere in your life and force you to do things. So they've slowly, you know, chipped away at it, chipped away at it, until, you know, in 94 they passed the assault weapons ban and they did away with cosmetic features and they did magazine capacity legislation and stuff like that when, you know, it didn't have any effect, and it suns that sunset in 2004. That's why we can buy 30 round mags and you know have bayonet lugs and heat shields, which don't really you know have any effect on the way that something operates. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we've got they've got uh, another one being proposed in Congress, uh, HR 127. And it's going to say that I have to register everything that I own with the government. I have to pay a special tax for owning AR-15s and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And if I don't tell them what I have and I don't register them, then they can send me to prison for 15 years and fine me up to $50,000. To which I say, I can tell you anything. And the other thing is with, with this HR-127, the registration and... You have to tell them where you keep it and everything like that. It's public information. Anybody can go in there and find out what you have and where you're keeping it. That's here's here's something that I think and and just the the whole idea of registrations and stuff like that. When you when you deal with databases, people don't realize like what the effects that has because like. Nowadays, with technology, we have so much convenience of, okay, let's just throw it in a database, let's throw this, you know, and you, and you think, oh, this is a, uh, something that we can do that it would benefit or that would be good, you know. A database is like a filing cabinet on your computer, obviously, but 
anybody Your who can get into it. dog makes grossest noises. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who can get into it has access to it. So the when any centralized registration, there's there's a potential for that abuse. being yeah abuse. And, and a huge potential. It's not. It's not just a. Oh, this can. This can it be. It can happen. Yeah, it can happen. It's. It will happen. And and so like the the thing that I found so interesting was like the social security the department itself, or like our social security numbers. There was a big big outrage when people when they, that was proposed because people didn't want the government to know who they were. It's like why should the government have an ID? Because there was two things that they wanted at the same time. There was, they wanted, to, um, the government was trying to get a, um, ID, ID, identification number, and they were also trying to get a, um, a way to, basically, so, so you can have everybody ID'd, and then you can have a ID card, a way for them to, to prove it. And when Social Security passed, there's two, two religions that, um, took a stand against it, were the Amish and the Mennonites. And they said that they didn't want to participate in Social Security because they didn't believe in games of chance. And they viewed insurance as a game of chance. You're playing the chances. And and I, I found that fascinating. Um, so the Amish and the Mennonites were excluded from the Social Security. And they, Social Security originally, like the original cards that they, sub, that they submitted, it said this is not used for identification. And it was very easy to figure out someone's Social Security number because the first number re referenced the state, the second number referenced the um, the hospital within that state, and the third def number represents uh, was the was just an iterator of which birth that was from that hospital that year or something that effect. And and um, so I, I could have gotten those mixed up a little bit, but it was it was very it was not difficult to figure out who was. Um, if, if you wanted to find someone that was born near you in the in the same hospital around the same time you can just guess a number that was close to yours and it's likely to be correct and we're using these as as nowadays we're using them as an identification and as a um, as a registration well the thing that the thing that I found really interesting though what you doing Mitch <laughs> the thing that I find really interesting is um what are you doing? Now I lost my train of thought. Good. Talking about gun registries, databases, social security numbers. Yeah. The the thing that the, there's several things there. But when when you come back to any kind of like a, a registry that they have, if you if you, if that registry is formed, if it's if it's made in a paper registry, then someone has to physically break in and get the information. They have to find it and get it. When it's a digital registry, they just have to get access to that computer or that that database. And well, there's there's data breaches all the time. That's exactly what I'm getting at. There's there's so many different data breaches, and so it's like when you're on the internet, you should you should always use the wrong information as much as possible like my, my kids were were shocked when I told them that, that it was okay for them to lie on forms of asking them their names and stuff for websites and stuff I was like no I want you to lie here I'm like what I was like yes I don't want them to know your name or your birthday or your where you live that kind of stuff no absolutely not and whether that's for emails whether that's for um, signing up for some uh, emailer or some list or anything you you don't want to give people your information because you first off once you give it you can't ungive it you can't take it back it's it's kind of like when you're cooking once you put something in the pot you can't take it out again it's it's there it's mixed in with everything else and there's data breaches all the time and the, the fact is we we technologically we develop much faster than we do we develop the ability much faster than we do the way to protect that ability. And that's just the way that that we develop. I sat on it. I'm sorry, I was kind of going off. If I understand the, the bill correctly, you know, there's a database that would be created and everyone would have free access to it. Mm -hmm. They'd know what guns you had, yep. where you live, what your name is, and 
whatever other details so, the, the government decides to, to throw in there. Yeah, you look at it and you're like, and you're a criminal, you say, hey, look at all this cool stuff this guy has. <coughs> and then it makes it easier to, you know, set, do um, recon on this person. When are people gone? When are people home? When can I sneak in? And, you know, because, I mean, you can have the nicest safe in, you know, on the market. But that's not going to really do you any good because you can get into a safe with a freaking hand grinder and a cutting blade. Zip, zip, zip. And then you just pry the steel back and cut through the lining. They, they mean, unless you build it out of pretty heavy gauge steel, I mean, you can just cut through most commercial safes pretty quick and easy. So, I think most of us, I think we'd agree here that large portions of that bill are unconstitutional. The entire bill is unconstitutional. Uh, but the, the, the Democrats at this point have the ability to push it through, most likely if they chose to. Uh, so is there any chance that the Supreme Court w would find those unconstitutional? Probably not, because the Supreme Court is just like anything else, people can be bought and I, that's they don't they don't care about the constitution anymore it's, uh, going going back to for example the impeachment john roberts the chief justice said i'm not gonna sit over this and for it to be an impeachment the chief justice has to sit over it, preside over the impeachment and the whole thing just shows how unconstitutional everything really has gotten um, I don't, the, the Democrats, I think passing that bill is ambitious at best. You still have to have two-thirds, um, majority to pass it in Congress and then move it to the Senate. And I just, I don't see that they have enough Republicans crossing. Maybe they do. You never know with the Republicans. <laughs> but, uh, maybe... Maybe they're just looking to get Republicans to once again compromise by pushing so far to the extreme that they're willing to accept a few more restrictions. Well, that's the thing. The, the politicians might be willing to, but I don't think the average American, especially gun owners, are willing to compromise anymore. That's where we've gotten is people aren't willing to compromise anymore because on the one side you have the people who want to force and you know, make us live a certain way and adhere to certain values that they hold. And on the other side, you have people who are not going to be pushed anymore. Aren't going to have more taken from them. And it's just, it's a really bad situation. But I don't think there's much of a chance of the Supreme Court saying, yeah, this is unconstitutional because... If that were the case, they would have overturned the National Firearms Act of 1930-34, and I would have, you know, full autos and suppressors and whatever. I mean, nobody's interested in in doing the right thing or the constitutional thing, and you've, we've heard Joe Biden say it. Um, Second Amendment mean, doesn't mean that you can just own whatever you want. Yeah, it does. <laughs> That's exactly what it means. It's in there, and it's pretty specific about what it says. Well, the militia is referring to the National Guard. No, it's not. The militia is referring to every able-bodied man between the ages of 16 and 40. One of the things about the National Guard is, from what I understand, once it gets mobilized, it becomes a federal force, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because it's, so still, it's, it's still it's the Army. It's not a state force. They go to the same basic training. They, go, they swear to the same oath. They get paid from the same, you know, DFAS Indianapolis. You know, so, I mean, yeah, it's a state entity, so the, the, the governor can say, hey, you know, go to this mudslide, um, go to this hurricane, you know, or, you mm -hmm. know, um, respond to these riots, whatever. But once they're activated, they're, they're, they're not... They're federal control. They, yeah, they fall under the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. So that's that's very very clear that that's not the that doesn't fit the bill for what the 
yeah. Second Amendment Absolutely not. states. And Absolutely one of the benefits not. of having the, the state run in militia is that the people are defending their homes. And that's one of the first things that you do with the National Guard is you take them out of their, their home state. Mm -hmm. Which is counter to what the, the, the idea behind that Second Amendment, in my opinion. So, for example, during Hurricane Katrina, they didn't um, activate the, the states that were affected. Well, they did. So that's not completely true. They did, but... So in cases of, like, civil unrest and stuff like that, they're going to activate the Utah National Guard to go to Texas. They're going to send the North Carolina National Guard to Utah. You know, they're just going to move everybody all over the place because... There's no um, question you're yeah, it's, not it, your home there. Yeah, you're not... What you're doing isn't affecting your neighbors. You're not, you know... So... But the, the argument that the National Guard is the militia is just not true. Mm -hmm. They're tied together somewhat loosely, but... I mean, the funding comes from the from the federal government. The weaponry comes from the federal government. If the president decides to activate the National Guard and send them overseas, then, you know, <laughs> the governor doesn't really have any choice in the matter. It's really... I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's the National Guard is not the militia. It's the militia is supposed to be, you know, organized and unorganized. You're supposed to have a couple different groups. Where are you going, Fred? I'm seeing how long we've been. Um, almost a little over an hour. An hour and twenty-three minutes. Oh. It's three fifteen. Oh, it's 3.15. We better wrap it up soon. Wrap you up. It's starting to get chilly. Yeah. Mm. We'd have been warmer if we would have sat there. Yeah. <laughs> One side of me is warm, the other side's kind of cold. Ben's far enough away from the fire that he probably does not get much of it. we get in a little bit. Let's get cozy. Yeah. I won't bite. I might rub your leg, but... Ah. Oh, you dropped your thing! That was all Fred's fault right there. Oh, can I drop it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> well, hey. let's wrap it up then, Fred. I guess the thing that... we It feels like we hit on it every week, but... The freedom is not going to be given to you. We have to live freely. We have to be free. We have to be what we believe. And that's, that's living the Constitution. And that's not, um, that's, that's not just the popular or the, the convenient parts. It's just be, be free. And that, that's, 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 it's all about uh, how we're acting, in my, in my opinion. Oh, no. Not good things. Well, you saved your iPad, but you dumped the Constitution right in the mud. Not good things. <laughs> Not my iPad. Your, your, your freedom is given to you. But people are going to always try to take it. It's the most precious thing you have. Um, you know, people will say that you know, the scriptures or the gospel and stuff is the most precious thing we have, which is, is true. But if you don't have freedom, if we don't have that freedom of religion, we don't have the gospel. So it's equally as important. I mean, the freedom is one of those things that, you know, most people haven't paid for themselves. They're not, they're not truly invested in it. But it's the most valuable, precious thing you have because without freedom, you don't have anything else. That's what we. The whole reason why we came here on Earth was because we fought this war for freedom. We we wanted to be free. There's something in every every person that lives has made the choice to choose freedom over um, tyranny. 
and that's something that I, that we hope really does ring true to whoever whoever hears this and whoever whoever listens is that there is something that desires freedom inside of you and you need to you need to continue fighting for it satan has not changed his plans he's still trying to captivate man whether that's through sin to to put man in captivity whether that's through sin whether that's through um tyranny whatever it is satan always wants us to be enslaved and god has always given us our chance our 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 freedom of choice it's a sacred thing that that we really do need to 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 cherish that's that's my opinion but i believe it god intended man to be free and it goes back to what the founder said that man can and should govern himself i've had this this phrase stand for truth come to me this year and I think it ties into what you're saying. God, God wants us to stand up. He wants us to be better and come closer to Him. Um, and it doesn't have to take hardship or trials fo- foisted upon us for us to stand up. It just has to take us deciding to do it. Um, and that makes the times when trials and hardships come that much easier because we prepared ourselves ahead of time. Uh, so find one principle and gain an understanding of it and then stand for it and do that over and over and over again. Uh, the, you know, the amendments and the Constitution and the freedoms we have are based on underlying principles, a foundation that is the most important. Um, And I think that's because it was inspired by God. We always want to be comfortable, but always being comfortable, there's, you don't have the opportunity to actually to grow and to learn, and we're supposed to continually be growing and learning, and I mean, as long as you're comfortable, especially with, you know, being trampled on and being told what you can and can't do on, you know, big things, let alone trivial things, you know, that's why a lot of people don't fight, but oh, it's not worth, it's not worth getting in a fight over, but really, most things are. And as, if we stay comfortable, we don't learn anything, and if we don't learn anything, we don't value anything. you're not willing to stand for something when it's easier you're not going to want to stand for it when it's hard absolutely well said what are you looking for there's something that i recently learned and it's in doctrine covenants 46 and so 46 there's it's a section where they go they talk about the gifts of the spirit they talk about these these things that um that god gives us and the, the very the, the thing that I wanted to share was in verse 7. So it talks about how... Um, it talks about how the, the reason that God gives us gifts. And at the end of verse 7, it, it say, states it very clearly. Um, I'll read the whole verse. It says, But ye are commanded in all things to ask of God, who giveth liberally, and that which the Spirit testifies unto you, even so, I would that ye should do in all holiness, uh, 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 in all holiness of heart, walking uprightly before me, considering the end of your salvation, doing all things with prayer and thanksgiving, that ye may not. And and so first off, the prayer and thanksgiving I thought was was useful, but this 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 part right here. And this is why, and this is the reason why God gives us gifts of the Spirit. This is the reason why God gives us the ability to, um, to the just the different abilities that He gives us, the the things that 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 are good inside of you. Here's why God gives you gives them to you. And He says, so um, having a spirit of thanksgiving, that ye may not be seduced by evil, 
that ye may not be seduced by evil spirits, or doctrines of devils, or the commandments of men. For some are of men, and others are of devils. And that's what I feel we're, 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 we're seeing today. There's so many people trying to be, there's so many people being seduced by the doctrines of men and the doctrines of the devil. And, and that comes down to tyranny. It comes down to taking away your, your rights and your freedoms. It comes down to um, making you feel guilty for who you are as a person or for the, the, the blessings that you have in your life. It comes down to breaking down your family, breaking down the importance of your, of your home. And the, the spiritual gifts are given to us so that we will not succumb to that, so that we can know how to fight against that. It's, there's a reason why they're so linked with the, the armor of God. It's because we're, that's, that's God's way of arming us and preparing us to fight against the evils of our time. Is those spiritual gifts, and that's that's what made me think of it. Is just seeking after those. That, as far as what we can do to to fight against, to, to live freely, I think truly we can we can turn our hearts to God. We can try and be who He wants us to be, and that'll bring us to freedom. And that's that's something that I I believe. Amen. Amen. I believe you forever. I'm with you. I, I just thought it was so interesting. I, I, I read that recently, and I wasn't looking for that at all. But that, that verse 7 really was just like, wow. This is the whole reason why we have these, like, the rest of the chapters about these gifts of the Spirit. And I don't know if it's the rest of the chapter. It seems like there's some more stuff in there, but a good portion of it. There's some other stuff in there. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not downplaying what you're saying. I just thought it was funny. There was some other stuff in there. It's all right. I was, uh... <laughs> Anything else before we end? No. Clear. I'm way more handsome than you are. Your beard's longer, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you won't make it. Glad I'm not out of place. I didn't shave. <laughs> Thanks well, for letting me join, guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming. This yeah. is Elders Rising episode, whatever. Way too 20. many. 20.